Hello, welcome back to Clickbait. Now today we're going to be talking about rescuing a picture. If you've had to take a picture that wasn't the ideal situation, then can we save it in Photoshop to make it become the thing you want it to be? Now, I don't have many rules in photography because photography shouldn't be about rules. It should be about freedom to create and express. Unless you've got a client demanding a very specific thing, you should be up to you to, to make it what you want. So these aren't so much rules as, as guidelines, which I follow as much as I can when I'm taking pictures and when I'm working. First of all, don't look for the obvious. Try and find a different picture. Everyone else is at the beauty spot taking a picture of the mountain. Don't take a picture of the mountain. Take a picture of the shadow of the mountain. Take a picture of the bird flying over the top of it. Find something different that no one else is looking at. So you get a different picture to everyone else. Something more creative, perhaps. Secondly, I try and always shoot everything as I want it to be in the camera so when you get onto the computer there's almost nothing to do just maybe a few little tweaks here and there sometimes the perfect um, backdrop for your subject has got a telegraph pole in it or there is a bird flying through the shot or something else is just spoiling it and you can take that little thing out in photoshop i will allow that i'm not sort of fully magnum 100 percent where the magnum photographers don't allow any changes to the reality at all you can uh, have a little tweak uh, as far as i'm concerned however sometimes you have to go beyond those guidelines. Now this all starts the other day. I was doing a shoot for a company that wanted uh, pictures of their buildings. So normally when I'm doing architectural shots, I'll be taking something like this. This is a tilt shift lens. This is a 24 millimeter uh, F1.35 Nikon D series tilt shift. And the idea with these things, if I free this off, is you can move the plane of the lens and the, oops, I'll lose that the angle of the lens so you don't get converging verticals your parallels all go straight um, so you've got a big square building in front of you when you take the picture normally if you lean back the whole building will just bow out in the photo this will correct that however I'd already scoped this building out and I've quick recce on it before we got there and I noticed a couple of things about the uh, the building first of all it was massive and I couldn't really stand far enough Back without getting a few things in the shot. For example, across the road there was another building which just overlapped ever so slightly on one corner. Down at street level there were lots of street furniture things. There was bollards, uh, information board, benches, bins, a helicopter. Um, and even standing on the benches with the tripod as high as I could make it, I wasn't going to be able to get the shot I wanted. I knew I was going to have to shoot it with a drone. I also knew that the light would fall on it perfectly at about half past five to six o'clock in the evening. So I needed to be there at that time to get the beautiful sort of evening sun lighting up this place and making it just glow. So I went there at six o'clock, got the shot of the building, but yeah, you've got the drone in the air. You're always gonna have a little look around just to see whatever else there is because you don't wanna waste the opportunity. Every flight, every time you pick up a camera, there's something in front of you that might be worth a photo. Always take the chance to just, just turn around, look behind you, look above. In this case, I look down. And you may have seen these great photos of camels trekking across the desert. You can barely see the camel, but you can see the huge shadow. And that's what I saw here with the helicopter. Barely visible in the shot. But this shadow, this amazing shadow, you can see the light glinting through the windows. You can see the tail rotor, all this stuff just kind of happening over here. Um, but it's spoilt by all the street furniture that forced me to use the drone in the first place. It's still in the picture. So... Here's today, I'm gonna to break my golden rule of not photoshopping a picture because, well, my golden guideline, um, because you should be looking at what's in the front of you and not creating an artificial reality. In this case, I want this picture, but I can't get it without a bit of Photoshop. So here we go. Now, fortunately, I do have one guideline, which isn't a guideline, but a rule. Always shoot in raw. So we can start off on a good footing with this in terms of quality and exposure and everything else. Right. Let's get in there and start getting creative. So we can start up in the contrast to get more detail out of that shadow. Turn the highlights down because you can see from the red fringing parts that was very, very bright sunlight on the left hand side, the bottom of the picture, which is the right hand side of the helicopter, and a bit darker on the passenger side of the helicopter. Um, calling it a passenger side. I think they've actually worked the other way around in helicopters. I don't really know. I can't fly one. If you go for a stronger colour there, let's bring up the vibrance and the saturation and give it a bit more punch. I think it'll it'll benefit from that later on. There's three tools we're going to be using for the most part here. We've got the spot healing tool, which is fairly clever if you've got a shape which is well separated from everything else. It can take the colours and patterns and textures from around it 
and blend them to replace the item that you're trying to get rid of. This is really good because it takes a lot of the pressure off trying to find a good match for the, for the uh, texture and the colour and everything else. But it is a bit arbitrary, it's not got any finesse. It's okay for big sort of flat areas like that, but it can be a bit of a pain because it just sometimes, if I demonstrate here, if we go somewhere a bit more complex, it will get confused. If I go across this little bit of concrete on tarmac just here, it's gonna get very confused by all these textures and it just didn't really know what to do with that. So it's taken away some of the right stuff, but not all of it. When we get to areas like this, we're gonna go for the stamp tool, command key S. More control, but because you're sampling and you get to choose how hard you sample, whether you go fuller past it 100% or very light and just sort of drift a bit of the pattern over, you don't always get the correct um, texture to the background, so you have to be quite careful how you use this. And thirdly, we're gonna be using the pen tool to select things so that when we want to cut really specific items out we can select them really precisely. First of all, before I don't go too deep into this, let's lose some of the area that I don't want to have to waste time cloning out. I don't want to be doing all that table, that table there, all this stuff over here, and already I've saved myself about 20 minutes of cloning just by removing it from the shot. And we've got the helicopter straight across the bottom there. This is good. So right, we're into this thing. Start outside and work our way in. Now using this square bracket, smaller and larger, we can control the size of our brush. And it's the J button to select the um, spot healing brush. We can jump in here and just paint out this what must be quite a tall table with like information and things on it with these interesting little long legs of stuff underneath and that's now gone it's messed up the um the pavement edge just a little bit there but we can correct that here we can do post post production what we can do we can do one of two things we can either use the stamp tool at this point to try and take a bit of texture which is the right angle here copy that from down there using the alt button and clone that in over here but I don't think the angle is going to be quite right but what we can also do if we duplicate the background so we can work on the copy layer select in this case just using the, the marquee tool just to make a really quick selection over here of some other curb stones apple C to copy apple D to deselect apple V to paste we can move that up over. So using the Apple T command, you can then just rotate that little thing you just cut out, drag it across where you want it to be, and shrink it to fit. And no one will be any the wiser that you've copied and pasted something that was never there before. And you've got to be extra crafty, hit the E button to erase, and just brush over the edges so that you blend a little more. And with background turned off, just go up into the layers menu and merge visible. So that is now fixed and we've lost that thing already. Now let's try hitting the J key for the spot healing brush and take out a couple more of these bollards down here. Now you see what I mentioned about the uh, spot healing brush not being that accurate. It's seen this circle of concrete over here and it's replicated it a few times over on this bit of tarmac as well. So you do have to watch what it's up to. So we can hit the um, S key and we can rubber stamp out this bit here, which it's never gonna manage to do, and take out the stuff here. Even if it doesn't look accurate, as long as it doesn't look eye-catching, finally for things that are easy, it takes the manhole cover off and this last bin here. And this is the easy part. From here on in, things start getting a bit more complicated because I'm going to have to start being really careful about what I do and don't take out. This one here, it's got a simple soft edge there so I can use a clone tool to 
take out these bits here, copy over these bits, copy over the rail line, and this is where it really matters because we're starting to hit the edge of the shadow, which is what we want to keep. So if we take the soft edge just here, and clone from here in the middle of the soft edge, Oops. we can then get that looking a little more accurate. There we go. Likewise, this um, little pedestrian guy down here. Sorry, dude, you're not wanted. So being quite careful where I choose my clone points from. Taking the soft edge again. I'll answer that email later. We can even take from an area over here, because that's the same texture and the same same brightness and everything like that. So we can lose our little walking guy there. And the rest of this um, anchor is actually a, a ship's anchor welded to a metal plate to make like a bollard for the chains. Now fortunately the chains weren't on there today. Now this is what we've got to be careful with because there's this other harder shadow going vertically through that rotor blade shadow. We need to be careful not to be copying that into there. Hit the J button. There we go, we can start using the basic one again. Although over here we have now got our rail line. Sometimes this one will work. The spot healing brush can figure it out. Let's give it a quick try. Sometimes it can't. Now already we're getting there. We've got a few more things to take off with the simple stages then we can move into the complicated stuff. So lose the leaf. The leaf is an easy thing to get rid of. Maybe if I go a little larger on it. I've got a reasonably good texture there. Tone just isn't quite right. What you can do here, if you've got halfway in that particular case, go to your old darkroom tools, go to the dodge and burn tools. I'm going to hit the dodge tool here and lighten this slightly too dark bit of shadow just a smidge. It's best to work with not too much exposure on the um, dodge and burn tools because then it gets a bit too harsh. But yeah, keep it under 10%. That's not too bad, and I think the tarmac is, it varies in colour and consistency there anyway, so we'll live with that, we'll maybe come back to that in a little while. I will now speed through these last two bollards and you can rejoin me in a second. Now in this area, we've got a problem. Because there was a bit of um, the bollard going through the shadow, we've not got a nice clean edge that we can just clone up to. So what I'm going to do is take a copy from here, which is a similar kind of um, pattern on the ground, but the wrong angle. So if we go in, do an edit, copy, deselect, edit, paste, we can then take this over here, and rotate it around, and twist it a bit until it fits along the top. Then we can grab the eraser tool and start taking the edges off again, blunt it down, so you'll never know it wasn't really there to start with. Cunning, huh? Just a quick level, just to blend it in completely. Job done. And then we can do the same trick again on the front of the uh, this tower part of the helicopter. I'm going to call it the conning tower because it looks like a submarine. I know it's not. And we'll do exactly the same trick as we did before with the eraser. All good. If we turn off the back layer, you can see exactly how little of the parts we've copied and pasted in. Almost nothing at all, really. Just the tiny centre sections. And once again, we'll turn off the back layer and merge visible so it's all one layer. Now, 
we have got rid of all the easy parts. We're now into the difficult bit of masking. So we'll start off with an easy mask. Down here on the side of the fuselage, it's mostly straight, just a few curves. If we go in with a pen tool, just hit the P button to start off. We can then draw carefully, click from point to point if you want straight lines, click and drag if you want a curve. And then you can grab the little white points to twist the edges around and just make it exactly right. Now I've drawn a box around the shape, go down to make selection, feather it just one. And now we have got a selection that we can paint into. Go and grab the clone tool and clone from left and right so you get matching textures on both sides and you can paint right up to the very edge because now the, uh, the selection won't let us go over the edges and into the subject that we don't want to damage or lose. And I do the same thing on this other shadow here below the rotor blade, taking it right up to the rotor. And of course, because we're sticklers for detail, we'll get inside this little gap here as well. Do the same thing again. Now before I hit the complex stuff, give myself a quick breather, let's take out these white lines up here because they're a little bit distracting and I think the picture will benefit. We're taking so much other stuff out, we don't have to worry about the purity of the image. We can lose these white lines, just clone tool. Now if we head down to the back of the helicopter, this is where the complicated shapes begin. We've got the tail rotor, we've got the gears, we've got these little tiny details all around the tail. There's kind of fencing and all the extra shadows that you can see around it, so we zoom right in tight. And this is the great thing with the pen tool. You can go in tight, you can move the mouse away, you can let go of the mouse, unlike the marquee tool. You can select and then if you don't get it quite right, you can click and drag on the points so that it doesn't matter if you get it wrong first time. You can keep on fine tuning until it's absolutely perfect and you can zoom into the pixel level. Get it really, really granular, I think is the word there. And then uh, this will take a couple of minutes. We can rejoin me in a second. And once again we do exactly the same thing, we just make a selection, feather it one, and then Robert is your father's brother. Now because we've got fairly basic tarmac down here, we can just go fairly broad brush, but you'll notice that where we've got that red tail rotor, it's bled a bit of red into the tarmac. We can go back in with a clone stamp and just tidy it all up. I'm going to give it a second go just to get the texture just right. Now I have to be a little bit careful here because you'll notice we can just go slightly over the edge of where we've selected and actually destroy some of the other parts of the image we wanted to keep. So if you do that, don't forget Apple Z, go backwards, do it again more carefully. And we can paint into all these little details with the clone tool. And kiss goodbye to the shadows. And once you've moved far enough away from the body of the, the subject you're looking at, you can go pretty broad brush with the uh, easy one. Now the problem we've got here is we don't actually know what the bottom of the shadow looks like because this is where the helicopter begins and the table ends. Um, we've got no real reference, so if we just get a nice straight line after this, I don't think anyone's really going to know unless they're a real absolute helicopter expert. And we can get away with that one. That looks pretty good, but I'm being distracted by this manhole cover so we'll just paint this out along with the curb. This final bit of white line and we have gone from an absolute mess of an image. It looked a complete disaster before. You wouldn't have given that a second look but we, we could tell couldn't we that there was a picture waiting to get out of this frame. So now we have something really good. We'll just go and Get rid of all these final little details, these other little distractions. We've gone so far, let's not skimp on the last little bits. What do you think of that, guys? You can now see the shadow really clearly. We've lost all the other distractions. I'm really quite impressed with that. I think this looks so good. So we have gone from this, which is, frankly, a bit of a mess. I could see there was a picture in there waiting to happen, but 
it just wasn't happening because of all this street furniture, all these other shadows just completely just distracting and spoiling everything in this picture. And through about an hour or so of just careful clicking, we've gone from this to this, which is actually quite an interesting picture. And we've got the possibility of throwing in this mono one as well. What do you guys think? This, is it worth the effort of trying to save a picture that's, you know, you can see the potential, but it just isn't there, but you need a bit of Photoshop time? Well, did I waste my time on this? Do you like this picture? It's, I think it's really quite a cool abstract picture of a helicopter. We've got the actual image of the helicopter down here. The aircraft is at the bottom of the frame, but you can't see it. It's almost invisible in the frame, but here it is in, in shadow form. It is looking for the not obvious, finding the, the weird, the different, the unusual. I'm pretty happy with this. So yeah, this is going on Instagram and Alamy this afternoon. Take care guys, if you've enjoyed this, please hit like and subscribe and all the rest. If anything you'd like to see in future videos of photography or Photoshop techniques, stick it in the comments below, let me know and I'll see if we can do a video about that as well. Take care everyone, I'll see you next time on Clickbait.